The Cellcast is recorded in front of a live streaming audience. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Cellcast. Joining me today is a man who has sunshine on a cloudy day. Welcome, Jacob. Why, thank you. Let me do some man. Let me let me use our co-host, a man who. Uh, a man who's just looking for a sunshine girl. Welcome, Drew. Aren't we all? Yeah, in one form or another. It's some, yes, exactly. So, uh, trivia. Yes. Have that up. Yes, you should. Uh, I do know the trivia question was: What is the name of the Japanese rock band uh-huh. who pro- pro- that provided? the uh music for this mm-hmm. do you know the answer <laughs> do you know the answer i can't remember the band's name off the top of my head <laughs> come on yeah oh, 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 God. God. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah this is a really good band really good band be like obviously i can't i can't remember the name's band at all for some reason <laughs> well it's rad wimps rad wimp of the band rad wimps okay and I can't get it to actually show me all the people who... Uh, oh, Josh Adams is the only one who got it, oh. right? Rock on, Josh. Interestingly enough, it uh, asks if you want to see the original version, you know, translate, because it thinks it's, a, it's a, 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 a different word. Yeah. It translated to cycling wimp. S- I don't get that, but it's funny. That is funny. That is so funny. Oh, man. But yeah, that was our trivia for this, and Josh is the only one who guessed, so he, he's the only one who got it right. Admittedly, this is not a... It's a popular movie, I think, among a certain subset. Yeah. But it's not as broad stroke as, say, even the movie we did last week, Thumbelina. Yeah. And definitely there's not as much nostalgia in this, because this is really us having our little fancy episode. Our fancy episode. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> This is our excuse to say, yeah, we're really art pe- uh, animation nerds because we're going to look at this movie only the animation and movie nerds know about. Exactly. <laughs> or anime nerds, for and, that matter. Well, some 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 movie movie reviewers you know, have reviewed this film before. True, true. But I'm saying in general, a lot of the pe- some of the people who probably listen to our show maybe not heard of this movie. Probably before. not. And so we're so, going to try to educate you on a, a, yeah. a, a very good film. Yes, uh, this is a pseudo sequel to kind of. Your Name, which we did previous. Kind of. Yes, we also did. movies we suggest. Also, a movie probably shouldn't watch it with your kids. Probably <laughs> not. <laughs> and this is kind of the same, but we'll get to all that in just a minute. And before, but before all of that, Jacob, how are you doing today? Man, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, this week I am on vacation. Lucky whoop, dog. Whoop. Yep, exactly. Woof woof. Uh. So I am I am officially on vacation from work, and so I've been doing a lot of art. Uh, and if you want to see some exclusive art I did for the patron for the Patreon, go to patreon.com slash sellcast to check out go to the five dollar ten dollar tier to check out the piece of art I did uh, for I think it was our Rockadoodle episode. I did a B cover. Rockadoodle is a variant. It's a, a, var- a variant var- album art is what I titled it. Awesome. And uh, you can get the the ink version, the full ink version, and the full color version. And uh, I, I spent some time coloring that thing. It was I, I thought it was a very good piece. What did you think of it? I liked it. I thought you did a very good job on it. Thank, thank you. So if you want to see the full version, we go over to patreon.com slash the cellcast to uh, at the $5 or $10 tier to go grab yourself some really good art. I think that's the web address. It might just, I actually don't know. <laughs> I don't know if doing patreon.com slash the cellcast is actually. I think it is up. actually. <laughs> I Probably. And I'm just being stupid, but. <laughs> But check. <laughs> but either or, so yeah, being on vacation, given more time. I'm um, actually I am currently dog sitting for for a family I know from church, and uh, that has been it's always an interesting experience dog sitting for dogs, mind you. Um, we had a sort we had well, a sort it's not like your dog sitting for cats. Yeah, that's true. Cats are just more like you know, indulge me, slave. <laughs> I do not hate cats. So just like this, the 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 parody of what a cat is. 
thought you were going to say something about you. You like him with like a side of ranch dressing or something. <laughs> no, no, you're no, not. No, no. You're not like another friend of ours who intentionally says stuff like that for fun. No. Oh no, 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 no. But yeah, we we had a storm come through East Texas, uh, which is um. Uh, uh, northern east texas if you you know look at a map i'm sure we've mentioned where east we, texas is we before. have we have but just you never know yeah we're halfway between dallas and shreveport yes or another so, way to think of it we're halfway between dallas and dallas mm-hmm. just a true different kind of dallas just a different just dallas dallas texas and dallas of geek devotions <laughs> yes so we are uh storm came through one of the dogs that i'm dog sitting is terrified of storms so that was interesting and uh yeah, I'm looking forward to Friday. I'm going to go see a concert, uh, Stephen Curtis Chapman in Longview. So um, I'm I'm definitely looking forward, excited to it. I'm not going to give details here because a lot of this is more so private. So, um, yeah. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I don't know what Saturday is going to be, but we'll we'll definitely play it by ear. What's going to happen on Saturday? So, what have you been up to, Drew? I've been here. <laughs> No, uh, I, I had a relatively calm week. Uh, nothing too exciting happened. I, you know, did my normal stuff. I mm-hmm. streamed a little. I, uh, you know, watched some TV, watched some movies, uh, got mad at the internet service provider. I heard about that. Yeah. I, last night when I was trying to stream Dragon Quest Eleven, mm-hmm. uh, I, ke- I kept watching the... Uh, you know, if you've never dealt with OBS, the mm-hmm. software that we we use to stream that stuff out, we don't use it for the podcast, but for mm-hmm. the actual thing. Yeah. The, the, when I'm streaming the games, uh, there's a little thing in the bottom right hand corner of the screen that tells you how your connection is. Yeah. And it will tell you how many times that you've lost frames where it yeah. shot something, but that brought that that frame didn't get broadcast. Okay. Yeah, it does happen from time to time. It Most does. nights, I actually do pretty good. We'll get with like a zero, maybe one or two, maybe 30 at most dropped frames. Yeah. So, you know, maybe a whole second. Ooh. <laughs> but last night, I had like 25 to 30%, and it was never going back down as the number of, as the video went long. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, well, okay, there's only one really good way to fix that. And that would be to reset the modem. Now, this modem that's right here, for those of you on the video, um, it doesn't have a button on the outside that I've been able to find hmm. to reset the internet. You have to make sure it's connected to the TV, go on the TV to the settings, and then the internet thing, and then you can see the button to reset. That's how it's supposed to work. Ah. Except hmm. last night, this box... Wasn't getting TV signal. Oh, fun! I was getting four hundred megabits per second down on the on the on on internet. Right. But I was getting no TV signal, and that's apparently how it knows to connect where to connect up and everything. So mm. I don't know what happened last night. Interesting. But yeah, the whole thing just crapped out. Hmm. And it's like, well, I can't fight this at this point. By the time I get it up, it's going to be time to finish. So. I went ahead and called it and just shut everything down and watched some. Well, finished watching this movie because mm-hmm. I was going to do that later that night anyway, and then watched uh, some episodes of Godzilla the series. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's. I guess I've transitioned into what I've been watching. You have, you have. unintentionally. So along with that, uh, uh, what else have I watched? Uh, watched some more Log Horizon at Chase's Sunday night. You yeah. were not there. Yes, I was dog sitting. Yes. Um, so watched some more of that. Played some more Final Fantasy fourteen. That's my train of thought leaving the station. <laughs> I say that knowing nobody on the stream just heard that because mm. I don't think y'all can hear the train, but I could be wrong. Um. Yeah, I I didn't. It was uh, I didn't get much watch since last Tuesday. Mm. Or really, I guess since last Friday. Because oh yeah, we did. I did watch something last week. Really? Yes, and you watched it too because we were on Retro Rewind podcast. Oh, episode yes. for the Thief and the Cobbler. And uh, yeah, that was interesting. Interesting. <laughs> I I'm, I think he, I don't think he said it's coming out this week. I think it's next week. 
Uh, but keep an eye out for that yes. one on his thing because that's a that, that's actually a good episode. I think, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying that just because we were on it. Uh, <laughs> I think it was actually a, a good discussion we had. Yeah, I think retro retro re, retro rewind podcast mm-hmm. is a very well production, very well done podcast. How much it's, is Francisco paying you to say this? I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, if you want to listen to a good podcast, go listen to them. Yeah, they're really good. Yes, um, including us. Yeah, and then also for that, we watched. I watched. Uh, well, I got caught up to the episode we were going to review of Firefly, which was bushwhacked, mm-hmm. and I also watched the Train Job because I, I did trying, too. I'm trying to keep up with where they're at. Right. Uh, so I watched both of those, enjoyed it. Uh, I think that's actually all what I couldn't think of earlier about what I hadn't watched. What I'd watched. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. what I've watched. What have you watched? Uh, okay, so besides Thief and the Cobbler, Thief, uh, Cobbler, what, what is Thief. it called? Yeah, Thief and the well, Cobbler. Thief and the Cobbler, the Arabian the... Knight, Princess and the Cobbler, Cobbler. this, I won't go there. <laughs> but yes, besides that movie, I watched two episodes of Firefly. Be like, for those who have been saying, be like, Jacob, you need to watch Firefly. I am actually watching Firefly now. Fly. Thank you very much. Exactly like that. So, uh, during my uh, my retreat to dog sitting in the middle of, I don't want to say nowhere because it's about ten miles out of town. Uh, so kind of the middle of nowhere. Kind of, kind of. And it's at a junction. I'm just saying, there's not much that direction. No, there's not. For like fifty miles. There's a bunch of cows. Let's say that. Lots of cows. Lots of cows. Uh, so, and they they have internet, so I use it freely. So I watched um, Batman Beyond season one, one through seven, which there again, Batman Beyond is incredible on a uh, HBO Max. Uh, also on HBO, the Batman season one through one through four. I was I mean like it's interesting. The the, the design is very the design is very good. I'm not the keen to span on how they draw the human face. Mm-hmm. It's like they have no cheekbone whatsoever. Well, I mean, that is a much more cartoony take on oh, the I Batman agree. mythos. I agree. Completely agree. Really, any other version of animated Batman. Yeah. But yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, except for whatever, if he ever shows up in, uh, was it called the Bat, the, the DC Superhero Girls Squad thing? Is yeah. The Supergirl Squad? I don't remember the name of the show. Yeah, it's something new. Yeah. I don't watch it. Sorry. Hmm. But yeah, I watched that. It's okay. It'd be like, it's starting to warm up. I've watched it previously. And so I'm trying I'm warming up to it a little bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, one that I know Drew's going to be excited that I actually did watch it. Finally did finish it. Marvel's what if. So Took you long <laughs> enough. Of course, part of that is my fault because I'm so behind on tangled series. We didn't get a chance to review it, <laughs> which is perfectly fine. Maybe like we're, we're we can, we'll, we'll, we'll it'll get, get released there when we when get, get there. there. Exactly. So I watched that. I watched episodes seven through nine, which is the conclusion of season one, which were very good. Um, I was like, I was kind of like, whoa, okay. They, they, they leave this cliffhanger. It's like, oh, this character might return in season two. Ooh, <laughs> interesting. Uh, the return of Batmite. Batmite. Never mind if you don't know who I'm talking about. Oh, it's Condiment King that's going to be showing up, isn't it? Condiment Condiment King. Yeah, I don't think this is this is not DC. This is Marvel. Oh yeah, duh. <laughs> I know that much. I was still somewhat <laughs> stuck on the Batman. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> not beware the Batman. <laughs> yes, yes. But either way, either way. Um... <laughs> I think that's all I've been watching unless I've, you know, just maybe some crime drama stuff, which I love, love to watch. Right. And, uh, yeah, uh, I had a very interesting phone call and we'll get into who it was, but they, they called asking, do they know the person who did the autopsy for a, uh, murder victim? And I was like, I think you have the wrong number. And he happily agreed and hung up. (laughs) So I thought that would just be very interesting to those who who either are watching now or listening later. Okay. Yeah. What so, do we got in the news? All right. So what do we got in the news? All right. So it's something to do with a pussycat. Mm-hmm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> all 
All right, so on the boot hills of yesterday's first look and cast reveal of Universal Pictures has launched the official trailer to DreamWorks Animation Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. The first uh, feature film from the Shrek universe since the Furry Heroes solo spinoff in 2011, The Last Wish looks to be a carryover of the classic W... DWA style melding with this, uh, describing the animation style. Yeah. Uh, so Antonio Benedetis returns to voice the notorious PIB. <laughs> Puss in Boots. <laughs> All right. As he embarks. That is so stupid. <laughs> I thought it was funny. That is so stupid. <laughs> All right, so as he embarks on an epic journey into the Black Forest to find the mysterious wishing star and restore his lost lives, but with only one life left, Puss must must humble himself and ask for help from former partner Nemesis, the captivating Kitty Softpaws, voiced by Selma Hayek. Added, Added against... His better judgment, it's against my will. It's against my will. It's against my will. So few people will get that joke. <laughs> but we'll get it. <laughs> uh, by ratty, chatty, relentlessly che- uh, cheerful muff. Uh, proof. Muff, muff. Yeah, puff. Okay. I'm um, making a joke. It's like, muff, muff. <laughs> like yeah. a dog barking. Yeah, muff, muff. mutt. Yeah, mutt. <laughs> mutt. Uh, At least it was muff. No, it's mutt. Mutt makes more sense. M U T T. Mutt, mutt. Yeah, apparently he's the team over the dog. <laughs> moving on. Yeah, moving on. Uh, so yeah, looks like we're getting a new uh Puss in Boots movie. Uh, they have not said when this movie will be released. So this is the first trailer. The first poster has been released. So go check that out. See what do you think. All right. So we the news. If I can get to the news. All right. So Disney Plus has released the the uh, this previous morning uh, celebrating Embrace the Panda making of re- making of turning red. A featured documentary about an all women team at the helm of Pixar's original new newest feature turning red uh, released last Friday. Pixar released a brand new um released uh now granted this information is from what's on disney.com's right. what's what's on disney plus.com uh this bit of information last friday pixel released a brand new disney or uh, new animated film turning red on disney plus and according to simba tv 2.5 million people in the u.s households watched turning red over the first weekend and that there again that's from what's on disneyplus.com okay okay so going into a movie that we or a um a sequel to a movie we've already reviewed and i think we did a reaction to i think and i know drew's excited about it i'm excited about it so what i'm talking about is sonic the hedgehog 2 is picking up is picking up full speed speed ahead to its april 8th theatrical release and Mm -hmm. just dropped a brand new trailer and it gives more information on Tails, Knuckles, Robotnik, and uh, I, I'm just, I've I've already seen the trailer myself. It looks incredible. At I'm, least they're not calling him Eggman yet. Yeah, yet, yet. Have you seen the mustache? <laughs> He's getting egg shaped. Yeah, a little bit. His mustache is more correct, right? <laughs> and uh, you do get to see. Uh, the final boss from Sonic the Hedgehog 2 in that trailer. Really? The giant robot. Oh, okay. I can't think of... I gotcha. I can't think... I don't think that's Final Egg. I think that's the name of the thing, but... Oh, Egg Robo. Yeah, and also the... Egg Robo, that's the name of it. The uh, the poster they released is actually an homage to... To the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 uh, box art, Mm -hmm. which I immediately picked up on. I was like, oh, that's good. (laughs) Because the Sonic fan over here is just like, ah! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you, if you go back uh, a couple episodes, when, when we, hey, when we're reacted to that first one, mm-hmm. I gave a prediction of where this thing movie was going. Mm-hmm. 
where the where the movies were going. Right. I think by the time the uh, we reviewed the move uh, the movie, did the full review of the movie. Yeah. They had released like a teaser trailer mm-hmm. before we knew officially Idris Elba was going to be Knuckles. Oh my gosh, yes. Which is still a mind blowing to me. Mm-hmm. I think they released a teaser and. From that point, we knew that I had called this thing. Oh yeah, to the T. I, I think I think it was it was by the second trailer we. It was by the second trailer we knew for certain because that. I think, yeah, but he called it. It was just spot on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're not going to Oil Ocean, but we don't need to go to. We won't probably won't go to any of the places, any of the levels in the game except maybe Emerald Hill might be Hawaii. Yeah, but. And they, they were playing the Emerald Hill theme as his ringtone in this last trailer. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, there again, this movie will be coming to theaters. Praise the Lord. It's going to theaters. Yes. <laughs> Unlike turning red. Come on, Disney. Really? Either or. Uh, so this 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 will be coming to theaters April 8th. And so we will be going to theaters to do a reaction to this. Most and I, likely. Most likely. And I know a friend of the show, Aaron, would want to tag along. Yes. If, if we get that uh, timed out. Yeah, if we get that timed out. And so if you are in the Tyler area and you want to go we'll see the movie. We'll have a mini get-together. Mini get-together if people want to get together and hang out. It's, and see how, you know, get get the community to gather yes. and do stuff together. If you're in the area. If you're in the area. If you're in doubt, if you're somewhere else and driving, if you're in Dallas. Go to a not go to one of those nicer theaters with the full IMAX that we exactly. would love to see this in, but are not oh. going to. Yeah, true. All right, because so, we don't want to drive thirty. We don't want to drive two hours. Indeed. All right. So, in the final bit of news: the 2022 EE. I'm not exactly sure what EE stands for. Uh, British Academy Award, our Academy Film Awards was held uh, last uh, held Sunday night. Presented by the British, uh, British Academy of Film and Television uh, Arts. Arts, also known as BAFTA. Uh, let's see. While the Mitchells and Machine was the was the Bella of the Annie Awards ball on Saturday night, Disney's Encanto. Am I saying that right? Encanto? I don't care anymore and kento uh was an, uh at another uh animated film honored to its long list of acclimates uh yeah so yeah be like those who won awards awesome so yes so that's all i got in the news yeah missed something what did i miss did you know that crunchyroll and funimation are merging I heard something about that. And, uh, yeah, that's happening, apparently. Hmm. The, I think fun, the fun, at least we're losing the Funimation app to Crunchyroll because that's the stronger streaming brand. Hmm. Don't know about the production studio. Can't find any information on that myself. Hmm. But anyway. So it's going to be crunchy fun? Doubt that. <laughs> that sounds disturbing. Very disturbing. But anyway, Ooh, no, it's munchy now. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. No, let's not. Do no, that. no. Anyway, that's that's the only other news I heard. Right. That you didn't already cover. That that is all I have. All right, then let's jump into the spoiler-free section of our review for Weathering with You. Mm. I think we both saw this for the fir- for the first time <laughs> about th- was it three years ago now. Mm. 2009. 2019. Yeah, 2019. No. Not 2000. No, yeah. no, 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 no. It was 2020. It was. Yeah, that's right. That's we right. We saw this 20, uh, in 2020. Yeah. Very because, early 2020. Yeah. Like early like January of 20, 2020. Mm, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was one of. that. That's when we both saw it. And I remember I absolutely loved the film. Oh, when yeah. We wa- when I watched it the first mm-hmm. time. Because good night. It's pretty. Uh, well i'll get more into that when we get into the spoiler section but it is a drop dead gorgeous film Mm -hmm. it's got a great story uh it's a great love story Mm -hmm. it's to some degree i don't think kids should watch it because i mean they 
her shirt does technically come off in one scene. You can't see anything. That is true. But because they're because it's actually what's happening to her. Yeah. But her shirt is off in that scene. That is true. Uh, and but it's very well done. It's well done. It's well done. Well, you don't see anything. You don't. Well, no, because what has happened to her is covering that part of her body. Right. Up. Right. But um, I'm having to be. Specific. I'm trying not to spoil yeah. anything. No spoilers. <laughs> yes. But I mean, uh, it, it's really not a movie I think kids would be interested in watching anyway. If we're being honest, mm. and there's some cool stuff in there. But I yeah, mean, it's, it's definitely a love story. Agreed. It's a romance. It, there's a lot of sci-fi fantasy elements in said romance story, but it is still a romance story at its core. Right. Uh, and I absolutely love the film, and that's about as spoiler-free as I can get. Okay. What are so, your thoughts? Uh, like Drew, I watched it also on two, in early 2022 before the pandemic hit. 2020, not 2022. 20, 2020, sorry. 2020. Hmm. Before the pandemic hit. Too many hit. twos and zeros. Yeah, yeah exactly. But uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it the first time I ever watched it. Uh, there again, visual total force with this director does everything just perfect visually story-wise great character-wise great character development great the i can see why the character did what they did but at the same time yeah you <laughs> yeah um but yeah I'll, we'll, we'll get into there when we get there it's under it's yeah yeah but um yeah there's there's I mean, like it's a great movie do not get me wrong this is a wonderful beautiful masterpiece uh I think it it kind of it kind of leans into its previous work, his previous work a little bit in this movie, a little bit. Um, there's some cameos. There's some cameos and some, some, some story connection. Story connection. Somewhat. Story connection. More on some, that in trivia. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so yeah, be like, I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. Would I tell people to go watch it? Absolutely. Uh, is it really a kid movie? Not so much. Nah. Um, it's a very well told story and probably, probably let older kids watch it or something like that. Yeah. But heck yeah, go watch it. If you are just, if you're an otaku, if you're just the average Joe, the you're average looking for just a good movie, yeah, good solid movie to watch. That's what you watch. don't really care that it's animated. Right. Sounds weird to say that on an animation centered podcast, but or anime. Yeah, I anime. It is an anime, mm -hmm. and but it and it, you do have access to the English dub and the original Japanese with subtitles. Mm. But the dub is good on this one. Yeah, dub is really good. Yeah, it's a very well done dub. Yeah, I I bought it on I bought it on Blu-ray when it came out. I know I pre-ordered it. He like, pre-ordered like it. the as soon wow. as we got home mm -hmm. from that from watching wow. it in the theater, I pre-ordered it. Wow. So yeah, it's it's one of those films that like the the basic you know animation nerd to the otaku to the average viewer it's, to the hardcore movie reviewer the guys who love movies to death it's all need it's, to watch this movie yes especially if you've seen your name yes definitely go watch your name because yes. that's really because you'll also see a little bit of it's a little bit of mirroring a little mirroring here and a little cameos here and perhaps there. some reflections yeah some reflections the water and some ribbon a lot of unions. Yeah, a lot of unions. <laughs> Reunions. Moving on. on. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and jump into the intermission so we can get to spoiling this. Uh, mm -hmm. We will catch you on the other side of the bumpers. Don't forget that you can download... Download? Don't forget that you can't... Uh, you know. Don't forget that you can listen to us record the podcast live every Tuesday over on our Facebook page, The Cellcast, our uh, Twitch channel, The Cellcast Gaming, and on YouTube at Cellcast. Also, don't forget to join our Patreon if you would like to support us monetarily. At $1, you'll get our everlasting thanks. At, at our $5 tier, you can get some artwork from Jacob. And at our $10 tier, you can get... Bloopers for every for, for every episode we've released that I've remembered to release them for. And you can get commentaries from different movies. So come check us out over there if you would like to support us financially. Hey 
every other week, join the Retro Rewind Pod as they travel back 15 or more years along the entertainment space-time continuum in their mission to review movies and games, establishing what is still worth your time today. Expect fun banter and trivial insights from Francisco and Paul, the Master Interrupter Powers, and rotating guest hosts who are all out of time. Do you like Star Wars? I don't just mean the original trilogy. Along with that, I mean the prequels, the sequels, the anthologies, the animated shows, and of course, (laughs) who doesn't like Baby Yoda? Well, if you've been in the fandom for any length of time, you know how toxic the fandom can get. And if you'd like to be able to discuss a galaxy far, far away in a much more positive light, might I suggest searching out The Outer Rim, a Facebook group dedicated to all of Star Wars, and check out their YouTube channel, which you can easily find at Pop Americana, which the podcast you're currently listening to is also a part of. To find that and more, check out the link in the description. following is a spoiler filled review for the movie weathering with you listener discretion is advised weathering with you was written and directed by makoto shinkai who we both know also directed and wrote your name mm-hmm. the cast was a uh, uh, playing hadoka morishima was brandon ingman and the only other thing I could find is he played a punk in empathy incorporated which I had no idea what that is really yeah uh hina amano was uh played by ashley boetcher hmm. and apparently in the tv show lost in oz she played dorothy gale really mm-hmm. hmm. case kisuga was played by lee pace and in guardians of the galaxy he plays ronan the accuser really yeah huh much bigger name than you're expecting to hear tonight isn't it yes <laughs> uh natsumi suga uh, was played by Allison Brie, and she was Unikitty in the Lego movie. Meow. Fumi Tachibana was played by Barbara Goodson. Do you know who she is? Barbara Goodson. The name sounds really familiar. She, she's she been mentioned in our podcast. Oh, times. many times. We, she's actually been in the, quite a number of our movies, but uh, there is one particular show I know we both watched as kids in which she had a very uh, major role, both first as a voice for this character and then actually playing the character in the uh, other seasons of the show. Hmm. Probably Clone Wars? No. Then who? Actually, she was in Clone Wars. Oh, okay. But that's not what I was getting at. Okay, then She played the uh uh in Clone Wars she was the uh leader of the witches on Dathomir. Oh, okay. But uh, that's not the point I was getting. Okay, at. then a certain uh Headache prone villain. Oh, Rita Repulsa. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she was. It's it's a, it's weird because you're. I'm sitting there watching this and go, Barbara Goodson. She was in this because I didn't hear someone yelling to make their monster grow <laughs> or anything like that. <laughs> and that's just a name that I now look for because she's still doing a lot apparently. Yeah. So yeah. Hey, some people are not just one-trick ponies. They do a lot of stuff. <laughs> granted, granted. Uh, Nagisa Amano was voiced by uh, Amika Gwendo. Mm-hmm. He is a fairly new actor because he's the one who played the, uh, the boy. Yeah. Uh, her brother. Yeah. And uh, he was boy number one on the television show Blacklist. Okay. I, so I've never seen one yet. episode randomly, so there's probably a lot of boy number ones. I don't. I didn't find the. Ep- I didn't catch which episode it was. My okay. apologies. Uh, Detective Yasui, which I think is the detective that had the, uh, yeah, the, what do you call that? The, it's it's the hairstyle. The, the hot dog? No. (laughs) It looks like a hot dog. It's actually an, it's, it's inspired by Elvis for crying out loud. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I know what this is called. Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, he was played by Mike Pollock. Yeah, that hairstyle. (laughs) That hairstyle. He was played by Mike Pollock, who... In the recent video games of Sonic the Hedgehog, right, he played Doctor Ivo Eggman Robotnik. Ivo. Ivo oh. is his first name. Oh, okay, that makes sense. It's a very good evil villain name. Ivo. Oh, Ivo is Ovi 
backwards because in the original thing, his parent, before he became evil, he was uh, Ovi Kintobor, which is literally Ivo Robotnik <laughs> backwards. And Ovi is very egg punny. Okay. <laughs> so they kept, anyway. This guy knows stuff. Let's say I that. Know, I, I know too much <laughs> is my problem. Pompadour. Thank you, Neko. Pompadour. Thank you. Pompadour. Pompadour is the, is what is that hairstyle? I think, it's, that, it's a, I think that was Yasui who had the pompadour. Yeah, it's a hairstyle from the fifties. If it wasn't him that had the pompadour, it would have been Detective Takai, mm -hmm. who was voiced by Riz Ahmed, and in the movie Rogue One, a Star Wars story, hmm. he played Bodhi, the uh, pilot. Oh, that gets captured at the beginning of the movie by Lawrence Fishburne. Oh, okay. Then that's not Lawrence Fishburne. No, that's not Lawrence Fishburne. Uh, it's the guy from Longview. I can't think of his name. Hmm. Anyway, he's also the one who actually calls them Rogue One when they ask for the call sign of their ship. Oh, okay. Gotcha, that's gotcha. that guy. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Kingdom Hearts Connections. Kirk Thornton was additional voices in Weathering With You. And in Kingdom Hearts, he was Sykes and Isa. Hmm. Joe Oakchman was additional voices in this. And uh, he is the... Th Fifth actor to ever play Jiminy Cricket. Really? And the third one to play Jiminy Cricket in Kingdom Hearts. Hmm. Ashley. Uh, it says Ashley. That is not her name. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. It is Ashley Bodicher. I was looking, I was thinking it was character name. Ashley Bodicher, <laughs> who voiced Hina Amano, our main girl. Yeah. In this. Voices Olette in Kingdom Hearts 3. In the Japanese version, Masako Nozawa is the for fortune teller. Uh, is, I played the fortune teller, one of the fortune tellers, and uh, was the voice of Meriwether. However, she voices a character you probably know better in Japanese as uh, Son Goku. Oh. She's that voice actress. Didn't she recently pass away? Maybe, but this is before that. Yeah. No, I don't think she did. I could be wrong. Because they're still making those things, and they don't recast often in Japan. Right. But anyway. Uh, Kana Nanazawa was the voice of Kana in Japan, and uh, was Foreteller Envy in Kingdom Hearts in Japan. And uh, Kyohei Kimura was Scoutman Kimura in Japan. And in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, he voiced Yoshia Joshua Kiryu, which is a role he reprised from when he was in the game uh, The World Ends With You, which you don't know what that is. Mm. But it was interesting to see him in that game, considering he came from another game. Anyway, that's all the Kingdom Hearts connections. What do we got at Info and Stuff? All right, so Info and Stuff. Uh, IMDB it has a score of 7.5 out of 10. You can watch it on HBO Max if you are a subscriber to HBO Max. Uh, it was produced by Comix Wave Films and Story Inc. See, I thought it was pronounced Comics Wave, but I could be wrong. It could be Comics Wave. I saw it Comix, but Fair it's enough. yeah, either or, which way we're going to pronounce it. Uh, and Story Inc. Uh, it was distributed by Tohei in Japan, and in America, it was distributed by G Kids. Tohei or Toho? Sorry, Toho. Sorry I was about to say Toho. It's entirely different companies. Yes, I wanted to make sure it is. It is. This is a lot more understandable than the Warner Brothers Walt Disney thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, it was originally released on July 19th, 19th. This is a different century. July 19th, 2019. And oddly enough, at 9 a.m. in the morning in Japan. I can see that. Yeah. And the U.S., it was released, and that makes sense when we, when we watched it. Uh, July 17th, 2020. July or January? January. I'm sorry. January. Because otherwise... July, like, we went up... The theaters were shut down. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so in box office, uh, it had an estimated budget of $11.1 $1 million. I don't know what that's translated to. Uh, so to go to its Japanese uh, release. So during its initial screening of 359 theaters... And 448 screens in Japan, weathering with you, sold 1.5 million, 1 million tickets, earning an estimate, earning uh, 
1.6 billion yen, which mm -hmm. converted to is 15.2 million dollars. In its first three days, it was reported that Wuthering U surpassed uh, the director's previous film, What uh, Your Name, by earning one uh, 1.2 billion yen, translated to 12. Point uh, $12.51 million at the time in the first three weeks of screening earning, um, an SM, uh, between, uh, 28.6% more. The film had sold the film, the film had sold 8.9 million tickets and grossing over $42 million in its first 17 weeks in market. And by this November 19th, 2019 by the end of november it had grossed uh 200 and 228 million uh yen converted to four uh that could be uh yeah million uh, i could be saying that wrong earlier um to four 41.78 million dollars in japan now going to its american box office all right, so its opening weekend, the United States and Canada was $1.8 million on January 19th. Uh, it grossed $8, $8 $8 million in the United States and Canada, and its worldwide gross was $193.9 million. So, yeah, it blew through its budget oh, beyond yeah. belief. Oh, yeah. And if you've ever watched the film, you know why. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that is all. Uh, hold on, I'm not done yet. I thought I was, but I'm not. Uh, film release or home release. The film was released on Blu-ray in Japan in May twenty second, May twenty seventh, two thousand twenty. A collector's edition uh, included a four K UHD disc with English and uh, Chinese subtitles. The film was released digitally in North America on August 4th, 2022 with a supplement release on Blu-ray and DVD on September 15th, 2020, a limited 4K UHD following that November 17th, 2022. This film is currently able to be streamed on HBO Max, uh, a streaming service of AT AT&T's Warner Media. Except I don't think at and is involved anymore. I don't think so, but that's the information I had. Okay. That is all for the info and stuff. As far as I understand, there's no sequel in the works. I'm sure he's working on another movie by now. Yeah, he's working on a movie. He might he'll he... be in that universe. Right. More on how he treats that universe here in just a minute. Yeah. So, getting into the summary. In June of 2021, you can definitely tell this takes place in an alternate universe at this yeah. point, because I don't think Japan was this open or uh, this rainy mm. in the actual June 2021. No. Because of a certain virus. Yeah. Thanks, COVID. Yeah. But in June of 2021, first year high schooler Hadoka Morishima escapes Kozushima in order to get away from his troubled home life in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. To Tokyo, sorry. When his ferry is to the city is hit by a rainstorm, he is saved by Keisuke Suga, who gives Hodoka his business card. As Hodoka becomes broke and struggles to find work, he meets Hina Amano, an employee of a McDonald's restaurant. She takes pity on him and gives him food. Later on, Hodoka finds an abandoned Makarov PM handgun in a waste bin he fell onto. After arriving at Suga's business location, he meets him there and his niece, Natsumi, though they doesn't realize it's his niece at the time. <laughs> Suga hires him as an assistant at a small occult magazine publishing company, where they investigate urban legends related to the unusually rainy weather in Tokyo. From a psychic, they hear the legend of a sunshine girl who can control the weather. Hadoka seems, sees Hina being intimidated into working at a back alley club. After a brief chase, he scares off the club owners by firing his gun into the air, thinking it was a toy. He and Hina escape. She takes him to Yoyogi Kaiken, an abandoned building with a shrine on the roof, where he throws the gun away. Hina astonishes Hodoka by demonstrating her ability to clear the sky by praying. Hodoka finds out that Hina lives alone with her brother, Nagi, and they have no adult guardian. Seeing how they are in financial trouble, Hodoka promises to start a business with Hina, 
with the ability of, with the ability of the Sunshine Girl, a job to clear the weather for events such as weddings and parties. They create a website to accept orders, and their business quickly becomes a success. However, when clearing the sky for the Jingu Fireworks Festival, Hina is shown on television, and their site gets flooded with requests, and they so they decide to close their business. A detective and police search for Hodoka and his family as his family filed a missing person report. They find out Hodoka was caught using the gun on a security camera. Officers arrive at the apartment where Hina lives with Nagi and interrogate her while Hodoka hides. Hina realizes that because they have no legal guardians, with their mother having died recently, social services are going to take them into custody and separate them. Right after the police leave, Suga visits Hodoka, having also been visited by the police. Suga fires Hodoka and gives him his severance pay, explaining that the police suspect him of kidnapping Hod- uh, Hodoka. Hodoka, Hina, and Nagi try to run away, but they are halted by the worsening weather. They take shelter in a hotel and spend the night with instant food and doing karaoke. As midnight passes, Hina reveals that her body is slowly turning into water the more she uses her power. She explains that she is the cause of the abnormal weather and is intended to be a human sacrifice, and her disappearance will return the weather to normal. Hodoka promises to protect her, but the next morning, Hina has vanished into the sky and the rain has stopped. In the morning, the police track Hodoka to the hotel room. Nagi is sent to the Children's Counseling Center, and Hodoka is taken to the police station. Having already fallen in love with Hina, Hodoka decides to bring her back to Earth and escapes from the police custody with the help of Natsumi and her Honda Super Cub. After her motorcycle is immobilized, Hodoka resumes on foot to Yoyogi Kaiken building to uh, reach the shrine. Inside, he encounters Suga, who attempts to stop him. The police surround Hodoka, but Suga, now inspired by Hodoka's desperation to see Hina, helps him escape. At the t- rooftop shrine, Hodoka jumps through the shrine gate and is transported into the sky where he finds Hina and asks her to leave with him, insisting that Hina let go of her worries about the weather and start living for herself. As soon as they come back to the rooftop shrine, Hina, Hodoka, Natsumi, Nagi, and Suga are all arrested and the heavy rain resumes. Hodoka is sentenced to a three-year probation and sent back to his home in Kozushima. Three years later, the rain has been falling without end in Tokyo, submerging much of the city. In the spring of 2024, after finishing his probation, Hodoka graduates from high school and returns to Tokyo to start college. He meets with Suga, who has expanded his business. After Suga encourages him to find Hina, Hodoka finds her praying on a street overlooking the drowned city. They reunite with Hodoka promising her that they will be all right. Getting into the trivia for this. That was a lot of story, but that honestly, is... you can't really no, you can't. make it shorter than that. That still left out a bunch of things. Mm-hmm. It did. But uh, anyway. Not to mention the cat. Yes, it did leave out rain. Yeah. Weathering With You is the first anime film to be officially released in India. Director Makoto Shinkai noted the online traction the film was getting, especially in Twitter, where India fans started trending India Wants Anime, or hashtag India Wants Anime, and made the release of the film possible theatrically. Hmm. The original Japanese title, Tenki no Ko, literally means Weather's Child. Hmm. Hodaka is inspired by Holden Caulfield, the fictional character of The Catcher in the Rye. In the film, Hodoka carries the book with him on the ferry to Tokyo. Hmm. This was uh, this film was submitted for consideration for the International Feature Film, formerly Foreign Language Film, for the 92nd Academy Awards, the first Japanese anime film to be submitted in this category mm-hmm. since Princess Mononoke in 1997. Mm-hmm. The film ultimately didn't secure a nomination for the category or a spot on the 10 film shortlist announced in December 2019. Mm-hmm. As stated earlier, this is the second film of Makoto Shinkai to feature music by the band Rad Wimps. The last theatrical anime, this is the last theatrical anime film with the 1967 MPAA logo in the end credits. Huh. Because I didn't realize it changed recently. Me either. Except I have noticed it was slightly different. But mm. anyway. This film does feature the voices of Michael Centerclaus and Stephanie Shea. And, and along with their Japanese counterparts, uh, Ryonosuke Kamiki and Mona Kami Shirashi, mm-hmm. reprising their roles as Taki and Mitsuha from Your Name. Their, mm-hmm. uh, their friends Teshi and Sayaka also make quick cameos in the film. 
Oh, yeah, that's right. Very yeah. quick cameo. Very quick. Since Weathering With You takes place mostly in 2021, and the epilogue of your name, uh, where Taki and Mitsuha finally meet back up at the end of the movie, mm-hmm. is in 2022, their ca- in their cameos in this film, they had not re-met each other uh, oh. at the end of that movie. Oh, okay. But so it's this- kind of stuck in between it. Well, get, get, here's the other weird thing. There, this causes a plot hole. Okay. Because nowhere in that 2022 segment there at the end of your name mm. features a rain-drenched Tokyo. No, it doesn't. That, that is a plot <laughs> hole. Apparently, Makoto Shinkai didn't care. <laughs> it's literally what he said. He'd be like, it's like eh. don't think too much about it. It, I, I didn't. It, we didn't go that far. <laughs> I, we didn't. <laughs> Honestly, we didn't think of it at the time. Didn't project ahead. We didn't, that we far. didn't project. We didn't think we were going to make a movie about a uh, sunshine girl failing at her job because she <laughs> fell in love with another boy and causing Tokyo to become uh, soaked in floodwaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and if you if you remember from that summary, I mentioned a lot of brand name things oh yeah throughout the film mm-hmm. that's because this is the first japanese anime with heavy product play oh yeah coca-cola and it is everything. like everywhere but the thing is the way the product placement in here is it fits what they're doing yeah it's, it doesn't really it, it, there's a little bit it's like yes yeah, obviously they're in a mcdonald's mm-hmm. and i'm sure mcdonald's had to sign off on everything that happened in there <laughs> And it's very accurate to what a McDonald's looks mm-hmm. like, at least oh, what yeah. they look like over here. I assume they look the mm-hmm. same over there. But yeah, they used heavy product placement, and but it ma- it makes the world feel real. Yeah, is what I'm gonna go is my excuse. Oh, for completely that. agree. Completely agree. This is Makoto Shinkai. Oh, sorry, backing up. In the movie, there's a cat sticker on the fridge at the K and A office. This is the avatar of director Makoto Shinkai on his Twitter. Really? Yeah. Huh. This is Makoto Shinkai's sixth feature film and his and twelfth film overall. Yeah, running at 111 minutes, it's also now his longest film, mm-hmm. beating out the previous record holder of Your Name from mm-hmm. 2016 at 106 yep. minutes, which beat his first feature film, The Place Promised in Our Early Days in 2004, at 90 minutes. Hmm. Last but not least, throughout the film, Hina is wearing a choker with a blue raindrop mm-hmm. symbolizing her fate. But when she is returned from the sky <coughs> by Hodaka, mm-hmm. the choker is broken. Yeah, I noticed that. That's a nice little detail. Yeah. Anyway, that is the end of the trivia. Ah. Uh, I'm going to go first, just because I want to. Okay, go for it. This movie features probably the best use ever of animated back uh, of a uh, computer animated background. Oh, absolutely. And that's not the only thing. As much as as beautiful it is, there's a lot of foreground elements mm-hmm. that use that too. But you don't re the only reason I noticed them is because I was looking for stuff. Yeah. But you get those moments where it's like that is not how you normally do a two D image. There's usually th- things don't usually rotate. Yeah. In two D. Oh yeah. Because that requires so much hand work if you're doing it either by hand or you're mm-hmm. doing it vector wise on a thing. So the way they had to have done it in here to where it looks right is that almost all the backgrounds and any foreground element that would need to rotate there with it Mm -hmm. had to have been done in 3d printed out, not maybe not printed out, but done, but not given any texture, not, not colored in anywhere yeah, so that they could then go in and digitally paint all of these backgrounds Mm -hmm. to, to look, so, so that they match the rest of the animation. Oh yeah, and yeah, you're, there are some parts where you're looking and go, yeah, that's a little too, that movie's a little too smooth mm. or a little too janky. It's hard to tell which sometimes, yeah. or to fit the rest of it. But there's just so many of those shots. It's like that are just downright beautiful, especially flying through the city on some points. Oh yeah, the scene there where they uh, walk up to the shrine. Oh, yeah, at the that, beginning, that and it does that turn? full 300, 180 degree turn. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. And of course, every time, every time that it's, you know, they reuse this animation like three times, mm-hmm. but 
the the flashback to her that scene of her walking through the shrine gate mm-hmm. and then being sucked up into the sky mm-hmm. is beautiful also oh yeah and this film just to jump on the second part of my animation thing has the best drawn water i think i've ever oh, seen oh yeah absolutely digimon uh try do you mind adventure try this is how you do water <laughs> <laughs> because y'all didn't do it good very true uh <laughs> this is how you do water because this is downright gorgeous water even though half the time it's not really water it's water-based fish <laughs> <laughs> that is true also the snow scene was beautiful even though uh, the snow and summer scene was beautiful too oh yeah uh but yeah this is the animation in this mostly in the backgrounds and in the water effects is really where it shines its brightest is so beautiful mm-hmm. uh and if for no other reason, just to be blown away by the by the art is a reason mm-hmm. enough to watch this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. That's, that's my first like. All right. So Spring Barring Off, his first, mine is actually the pure, absolute genius of the animation itself. You're, you're looking at um, somebody to be like, oh, it's just anime. But, oh, it's so much more. So much more than simple just anime. Because this is just like anime, animation done in Japan that is done with so much detail be like you have the backgrounds you have the foregrounds you have character design which is so well done like shadowing Mm -hmm. uh rippling effects on clothing the whole bit where most of them they probably wouldn't even bother with it like heck some disney films never bothered with it yeah but you're looking at so much detail and everything like drew said the backgrounds in this movie is impeccable great so stinking Detailed. so much detail going on it's like the the fact that like the the scene that popped in mind it's a very quick scene but it's so well done mm-hmm. so when uh honica is sitting at the mcdonald's yeah and, and um hina comes up and gives him the big mac when he opens the big mac and the big yeah. mac literally rises rises in its container uh-huh. and if you've ever been to mcdonald's you know it does the exact same thing and it's just drawn. It's done so beautifully. I'm like, oh my! Be like, I found myself captivated by by a burger rising in its container. I was like, what in the world? This and is, you I'm, know, the people at Japan, Japan, McDonald's Japan saw that and thought, this is so good. You put all this extra work in for this bit of product placement for what is essentially a commercial inside this movie because it really kind of does. It does in a, a way, in a way. Feel, but but it, I'm sure McDonald's paid a lot of money for this. <laughs> But then you look at the rest of the film, it's like, they didn't put any more work into this than they put in any other part of the film. Well, oddly enough, for some reason, this came to mind, because like, this movie does a lot of advertisement. A lot oh, of, a lot of ton. Ve- a ton of advertisement that is very done subtly. Yeah. And the way they do this- it, some, a movie that I think of, that I remember watching in theaters, and advertising was right in your face about it, was the, I can't remember what year this was, 2019, uh, Power Rangers, 2018. 2018, and the what was it? What what donuts shop was it? Uh, <laughs> they replaced Ernie's Juice Bar with a Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme that is the exact opposite, <laughs> and that's and, at the, and buried underneath that Krispy Kreme is supposedly where the Zeo Crystal it was, and there features a whole scene where <laughs> sexy Rita Repulsa. <laughs> Literally, walks literally in. goes in there and without doing because she's in her full Rita Repulsa outfit That's from that movie. She's not hiding. She's not dressed as a normal human. Right. No, she's a full Rita Repulsa, and they feature a scene with her where, for like at least a good three seconds, <laughs> she's sitting there eating a donut. donut. It's like in just, the middle of a Krispy Kreme. It's just it, it's like a full on commercial in the middle of this it's movie. Like, like, like what you, the? Do you? Like what do you like to be evil like this horrible like this evil woman who's going to destroy the power rangers <laughs> go to Krispy cream that doesn't seem like a good ad to be <laughs> no honest. it doesn't but it was just so jarring well this yeah movie, yeah yeah this movie itself does it very well with advertising the whole bit but i'm getting yeah. sidetracked and, and, this, and this bit with mcdonald's that mm-hmm. we've mentioned is like the worst of the advertising oh it's, yeah it's the most in your face the rest of it is like subtle it's subtle it's there it's like and admittedly, that McDonald's, they could have been any burger restaurant. And yeah. Admittedly, a lot of extra work was put in there to match 
Yeah. Like what you would actually see in a McDonald's. Yeah. Surprisingly all written in English. Yeah. Some of it. <laughs> Almost all the text in there was English. Yeah. I did not see much Japanese, which was weird, but uh, <laughs> we didn't get to see Donald McDonald in there. No, we didn't. Because in Japan, he's not called Ronald McDonald. He's, he's Donald McDonald. Donald. Because the R doesn't, there's something with the oh, R and okay. Ronald that gotcha. doesn't work right. Oh, uh, okay. But anyway. Um, animation. Beside the point. Yeah, beside the point. Animation, just gold. Oh my gosh. Yes. Be like, there again, if you are just a movie buff or an animation buff, like, doesn't matter if you're the. Doesn't matter if you like anime or doesn't not. Doesn't matter if you like it or not. Go watch this film. It's incredible. Just the, 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 the amount of detail work in this film is incredible. So, yeah, that's my number one. Animation, gold. Chef's kiss. My second like is that this is a far, far better movie. In my opinion, this is going to come off as a bit of a shots fired. Okay. Chick, chick. Yeah. But this is a far better love story. Mm. I want to say than Twilight because that's the joke. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and what, I'm actually saying, what I'm actually saying, this is a far better love story than your name. Oh, okay. in my opinion. Oh, okay. now a part of that is this movie ends at the right spot. <laughs> Great. Because you remember one of my yeah. things that annoyed oh my me the gosh. most about yeah. your name, and this is yeah. this. what's your name? Yeah, it's like no, no, no. Y'all need to kiss. You need to end on the kiss. Exactly. I don't think they ended on the kiss here, but it no, was an implied didn't. kiss. It was more like, can you tell me your name? Boom, roll credits. Like, no. <laughs> Does he have the courage to say Taki, whatever his name is? No, that's not what that was. And this was like, you remember each other. You embraced. They embraced. Uh It's like, thank you. You ended this. (laughs) I would have liked another scene, admittedly, just to kind of, you know, finish. I I, I would agree uh, agree with you on that. Clearing clearing stuff up. It's like, you didn't end it at the stupid name. As not the stupid name, but you you didn't end it on this weird spot. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's my second like is that it's a much better love story than your name and Twilight. Oh, okay, if we're being honest, right? <laughs> well, to be frank, any love story is be like any story right. cannot pass but Twilight I mean, and story. But but I al- yeah, I also mean that I actually believe these two characters are in love. Yeah. Even when they themselves don't realize they're in love. Oh, yeah. Unlike Twilight, it's course course of control. (laughs) And admittedly, the characters in your name, the reason I don't think that's as good a love story is because we never get to see them talk to one another directly except until the end of the movie. Yeah. Except for one other little scene on the mountain, on on, on the, the volcano thing. Crater. The crater. Well, the upper crater. Yeah. Probably where another comet hit. Yeah, but oh, also another thing I I forgot this when I was doing the trivia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, where they were doing the little they, they were doing the little ceremony that's kind of like the Day of the Dead thing. Yeah. There, where they oh were yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, that was at Taki's grandmother's house. Yeah. You realize who pro- where that person probably died in the comet strike. Like, yeah. From your name. name. Yeah. I didn't. I, oh. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I didn't <laughs> think about that. That is probably what happened. That's why. Oh my you... gosh! Wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for this connection. It helped Revelation. Me a lot. <laughs> I didn't know I wanted that, but it's like, no, oh, that's a great detail that I hadn't thought of. Mm-hmm. Well, no, actually, now that I think about it, that couldn't have been it. Because Taki was in Tokyo. It's Mitsuha. That was in. That's true. It is Mitsuha. Town. Never mind. But hey, works. It was a thought. It was it's a, a thought. thought. Probably died in a car accident. But anyway, moving on. <laughs> Either or. Yes, your second like. My second like. Uh, actually ties in a little bit with your second. Uh, so mine would be the cameos from your name. Mm-hmm. I was just more like watching this for the first time. I'm like, wait, is that who I think it is? And this guy's like, oh my gosh, it's from your name. <laughs> well, the thing is, they, they first showed Taki yeah. up there. I was like. Is that Taki? Yeah, I kept thinking it'd be like I never caught his last name in in your name. Yeah. I didn't know his last name was Tachibana. 
Yeah. I'm sure in the Japanese version, they said Tachibana at some point. Because mm-hmm. of the way the language works over there. Mm-hmm. You probably called him like Tachibana-kun or something at some yeah. point. But that's not what we got in the English version. So I I didn't catch that. It's like, I, I thought, you know, this guy looks familiar. And yeah. he sounds familiar. Is that? No, nah, that can't be Taki. Why would they do that? <laughs> Three scenes later, he's buying the ring from Mitsuha. <laughs> and she's got a name tag on. I'm like, ah! <laughs> And she has the, the she has the ribbon <laughs> in her hair. It's a different color, but it's the same. Of course, it's a different color. <laughs> the rib he had the her original ribbon. That is true. He had to him. <laughs> that is true. That's the only way that movie worked. Yes. <laughs> but <laughs> sorry, we have two romance movies that happen to work in its own universe, and we kind of geeked out. Yeah, it was it was just so. Was I think so... I think what we were in that theater. And Mitsuha shows up, and I, and I just start going, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? They, no other movie outside of, like, comic book movies does this. <laughs> exactly. It was a real treat to see those characters. Yes. And to understand, be like, this is before they meet up at the very end of your name. Mm, it's like, that is painful. That was painful. I was like, oh, my gosh. It's painful when you come to that realization. It's like, <laughs> they still haven't said their name yet. <laughs> But it's done so subtly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's more it's like not they're, they're in just your face. It is yeah, a exactly. Nice cameo Easter egg, but parts of it are very well thought out. Mm-hmm. Do you realize that when they met, Tokyo wasn't underwater? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe it was just a, a few or a, a random slow rain. You never know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe you never know. Said it rained for three years. Three years, and it was enough to sink a bridge underneath water, but. Yeah, at least going over Tokyo Bay. Yeah, at least the lower part of Tokyo. But yes. oh my, oh my gosh! I just like again watching a theater, getting this guy to and like, hey, did you see that? <laughs> was was like, oh my gosh, it's her. <laughs> that was the thing when we first watched this because we didn't know anything about the movie. No, we, we just didn't. Knew it was another Makoto Shinkai film, mm. and we thought, well, we lo- we love both love the first one exactly. Let's go watch the second one because how often do you get to see an anime film in theaters in general? Now we get to see it even less because of stupid COVID. Thank taking, you, Kim. Taking all the anime, the, the, the short the short run stuff away from Tyler. Thank anyway. you. Thank you, COVID. Thank you, COVID. We blame COVID for that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're sitting, and, I, and we're watching that, and I go, no. <laughs> no way that on earth. can't be. That's not who I think it is. <laughs> and it goes away and it's like, okay, okay. Me too! <laughs> Oh what my are gosh! What doing here? That means it had to be Taki. <laughs> Three seconds later, oh my goodness, that was their friends in that in that short little uh, scene of the sun rising earlier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I I have to say I love it when you geek out. It's yes, just hilarious. Yes. <laughs> but either you or, see me in Marvel films. You should have seen me in No Way Home. <laughs> Gosh, I can imagine. Like, I have a fe- I have a feeling I'm going to do the same thing in Multiverse of Madness. I'm not surprised. <laughs> but anyway, it can be like I, what I would love to do is actually get a camera on him when he's watching uh, the 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 one of these films. One of these films. Just put a camera in front of him, and, like let him geek out about it. <laughs> okay. That that would be okay. internet gold. Here is what I will do. <laughs> Okay. Here is what I will do. Whether I can get you to come over or not, secondary. Even though I'd love to have you here for a reaction video. Right. I will do it next time some big trailer is coming out. Mm-hmm. I will wait to watch it until mm-hmm. I can get home. I get the camera set up and then I will record a short video and put it on Facebook and YouTube of me reacting to something. There we go. I don't know when that next thing will be. It may not be a movie. It may not be. T- it may be a video game trailer for all you know. Yeah. Because he, when he geeks out, he geeks out. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's beside the point. So, yeah, the cameos in this film are just like, ah, nice little nods. It's not, boom, oh, the these are the characters from this movie. Be like, do you remember this movie? It's nice that, little nods. And yeah. it's like just perfectly executed. It, it's not in your face trying to drill itself into your cheek. Right. They, they, they are perfectly uh, useful characters. Admittedly, it didn't have to be Taki and Me Too Hot. Yeah. But the fact that they used those characters without really, because they could have been, it could have just been random NPC number 23. Right. Which I, I love how NPC now is just my normal term for in an extra at this point. But anyway. Right. <laughs> I guess it's my third like now. Isn't yes, it, it is. Uh, 
I got lost. <laughs> uh, my third like is the simple fact that uh, we because this movie is told mostly from uh, Hodaka's point of view. Mm-hmm. We're not told what the real problem is until Hodaka finds out. But you can tell as you're watching mm-hmm. that all these other people are realizing what's going to happen mm-hmm. if they're not careful. Even though half of them don't believe in the Sunshine Girl thing anyway. Yeah. The fact that there is a Sunshine Girl, it's this girl, and all the legends and prophecies say there's a price to be paid. Mm-hmm. There's a consequence for doing all this, and that she is going to have to sacrifice herself at some point. I love that they keep that from Hodaka for most of the film because, yeah. but without really, it, it feels like you know what's coming mm-hmm. because you heard the 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 story with the the fortune teller, not the fortune teller, the guy at the old shrine. Yeah, uh, when uh, you know the brother, the, the the man and his niece heard it. I can't think of their names, mm. and so he's like, "Oh, they're gonna, she's gonna have to sacrifice," and then they tell uh Kina sorry i can't think of names right now yeah uh they tell and they tell Welcome Kina, to my but, world but they don't tell hodaka mhm nobody tells hodaka yeah because they know he's going to freak out oh, uh, yeah you think and, and it's actually uh, admittedly i do think they should have told hodaka at some point that oh yeah this is all causing problems and it's going to cause a problems there is a price mm-hmm. to be paid for this service and it's not being paid by the customer that is true um it's being paid by the girl who's doing the praying mm-hmm. and she's going to disappear and much like in your name where they you don't really know what's coming until after it happens yeah i did not expect any either time i watched it because yeah. this has been a while since i saw it originally when i watched it for mm-hmm. this yeah, I forgot. I knew at by the end. I knew she sacrificed herself yeah. for them. I didn't remember when it was. Ah, and I, I just knew it was after the line. Do you want the rain to stop? Yeah. And I remember thinking, and 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 she disappears while they're asleep because she doesn't want to, you know, do that while they're there. Yeah, and I'm like, because literally when. That one time she does it in the rain and she kind of flies up, mm-hmm. but doesn't fly off, but, but slowly comes back down. I thought, oh goodness, it just happened. Mm-hmm. No, wait, no, it didn't. Because they haven't done the running away thing yet. Yeah. And then they go through the hotel after they find one that'll actually take them in, which I still don't remember how that works since even the love yeah. hotel wouldn't let them yeah, in. Yeah, me either. <laughs> I think it was just more but like they... They got someone who didn't care at the front lobby is what yeah. happened. It's like, oh, two te- two teenagers and one little boy. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's, that's not going to be bad at all. No. Um, well, she kept telling him she was 18. Yeah. She was lying out her butt. Yeah, she was 15. <laughs> yeah, she was still in middle school. Yeah. No, that will be high school. They said middle school. Oh, okay. So this is Japanese oh, yeah, grades. That's, that's right. So U.S. And, and they're, what we think of as ninth grade is the last year of their middle school because they have three middle school years. That's three right. High school that's years. right. Or junior high, whatever you call it. Whatever. I've heard it both ways. Um, haven't we all? Um, yes, we have. But I love how storyline-wise, as much as we, we – while we – do have more information than Hodaka most of the time. Mm-hmm. They don't allow you to really get the full ramification mm-hmm. of that information until Hodaka realizes it. Yeah. And I appreciated that. I appreciated that this was a story you had to be paying attention to and thinking about the whole time. Yeah. It wasn't just a shallow airhead romance story. Yeah, like so many of them can be. Yeah, agree. This was yeah, we're a romance story, but we're also sci-fi. Yeah, and fantasy. Mm-hmm. You've got to be thinking about what's going on, or you're going to get lost. Yeah, exactly. You can't just barely pay attention to it. You've got to watch the whole thing. True. If you understand why they're making the choices they're making, agreed. And why it's snowing in the middle of July mm-hmm. <laughs> in Tokyo. <laughs> How does it snow in July? <laughs> well, when your uh, I'm actually ex- really bad because of the. Uh, the water whale. It's apparently in the that sky. is whatever that that is true. I'm actually uh, making a song reference. A big 
cold front through town. Anyway. Yeah. I'm actually making a uh, song reference. Oh, are you? Yeah. Chris Gaines. Who? If you don't know who that is, moving on. on. All right. I don't have no a lot of music. I know music, but I don't know all the music. (laughs) Well, he's a country star, actually. It's been a while since I listened to country music. So Uh, in my opinion, that hasn't made any since 2005. eh, Just blame it all on your roots. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. (laughs) Continuing. Yes. Your last like my la my third like uh would definitely be the romantic story between these two characters is the fact that let me get the names up because i'm terrible with names um so honica is am i pronouncing that honica 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 i've been pronouncing yeah it. honica uh is find yourself in hong and um, tokyo not hong kong tokyo yeah, tokyo in tokyo and is basically running out of options now living on the street and he runs into uh hina and you just have this relationship build that's how really that's how be like this 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 notion that i think i saw one thing like i think it was like this week or last week where it was literally these characters but like they just met and they're automatically in love with each other Mm -hmm. and so this movie does it very excellently where you have this build up a trust they build up a friendship and where they ultimately start to fall for each other. And I think it's a very well done. It's not the, the cliche trope of, Oh, they, they, Oh, it was, um, uh, Thumbelina, Thumbelina. That was what yes. it was. Yeah. Thumbelina would be like, Oh, I'm in in love with the Prince. You don't know him where the, where you these two characters fall in love with someone you just met. Exactly. To quote another movie based on a Hans Christian Anderson fairy tale. Yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> I should have brought that up last week. You should have. I didn't think of it last week. I thought of it this week. Just let it go, man. <laughs> but it's just the 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 uh, the progression of that relationship. It's not the oh, I'm just I'm instantly in love with her. Be like, dude, that's that's lust, not love. Let's just be frank with that. Mm-hmm. Um, so just the the gradual progression of these two characters' relationship and their blooming of a relationship. And their like care and desire to take care of one another is so is it's not the in your face they're 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 doing you know other stuff but it's just it has this it has this realism like this movie has uh, like so much realism plus it's sci fi fantasy kind of a film but it is grounded in reality has so much um, like truth behind it that be like how relationships really work. And I really, I really, really, really dig that. That was really cool. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's my third like. All right. Well, we need to get into dislikes. Mm -hmm. My first dislike, they reused a lot of animation in this film. Mm. I say a lot. Yeah. They they repeated the scene of her going into the sky numerous times. Yeah. And the scene and the shot of her shielding her eye from the sun. Mm-hmm. A, a couple of times and they were, in most cases this was in flashback but not always oh agree flashback and i know that you know even with all the money they were getting from mcdonald's and uh everyone else mm-hmm. that they had paid that, that for all this stuff they i know they pro- the the budget probably was still very tight as yeah. it got close to the end nearly what it had to have been for this detail so i understand there's a couple shots where yeah it's essentially the same thing in the same setting or this will fit in here to better explain visually what's going on instead yeah. of having us you know look at them talking at one another because there's not really as much else that makes sense to do in this scene yeah but at the same time it is still reused animation mm-hmm. and it bugs me mm. reused animation always bugs me so yeah that's my first dislike is okay. a little bit of reused animation Okay, which is never bad, but when you use it, uh, it um, it's like almost excessive here. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, almost. It's not completely excessive, but it's like after the third time, it's like okay, we get it. She walked through the shrine right. gate and then got transported into heaven mm-hmm. or the sky or mm-hmm. whatever that green grass is on top of that anvil, cl- that cumulonimbus cloud is. Mm-hmm. 
what 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 I primarily think of when you say that the, the reuse of animation, I think of mm-hmm. Funimation's He Man of the Masters Universe, hey, uh, Filmation, the, Filmation, Filmation. I'm sorry, Filmation's uh, Masters He Man of the Masters Universe from the '80s because they rotoscoped everything in that and they reused everything and like for every two frames they reuse a certain mm-hmm. piece of animation but i would agree with you there are quite a few scenes in this film that is being reused and rehashed over and over and over again yeah but still incredible animation it is beautiful mm-hmm. it's just sometimes it's like okay we saw that already mm-hmm. you showed this at the beginning of the film you mm-hmm. showed this when you uh told us when you explained to uh hodaka how this happened. And now you're showing it to us again when Hodaka remembers. So he knows where to go. Mm-hmm. I get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can actually do like a quick cut and I'll get it faster. <laughs> yeah. In fact, Hey, th- instead of showing me the whole thing, do like you did just a second ago and show me that quick outline where you can just make out the shrine on top of the abandoned building. And I'll go, Oh yeah, that's where you need to go. Cause you had a- it's spotlight from the sun. <laughs> like you did at the beginning of the film. film. Except this was from a different angle, so it wasn't reused a reused drawing. I got gotcha. you. But still. Mm-hmm. It's like just play with it a little bit better. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> do, do another flyby. Those are pretty and are different animations. <laughs> yeah, all right. Your first dislike. All right, so my first is like Hodaka. Why did you have to destroy Tokyo? <laughs> why i knew this was coming <laughs> oh my gosh so the the fact I, that because hodaka is so in love with hinaka or Hin- hina I'm hina. To say. hina thank you hina is so in love with her she's disappeared she made her sacrifice and now he's willing to s- sacrifice everything to get hina back not caring that his his desire his grief his uh his love for hina is going to destroy most of the city. No, I just want her back. I don't care about anything else. I'm just like, I'd be like, understand, be like, you'd be like, you have a passion for this this girl. I get it. I totally get it. But at the same time, be like, how many people died because of your selfishness? <laughs> Do you want me to tell you the reason why? Uh, because the if the if she came back, it would just rain more and more and more. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll tell you why he was a selfish. A, anybody in this situation, admittedly, he was still in the puppy love stage, if we're being honest. That is true. But uh, I can, first off, she sacrificed herself. Oh, yeah. No completely. one asked her to do this. Oh, completely agree. She sacrificed herself to bring the end to the rain mm-hmm. to save both her brother and him. Yeah. Two of the people, two of the most important people. Oh, yeah. In completely her life agree. At that completely time. agree. That was her choice. Mm-hmm. If the, if Makoto Shinkai had done the hard thing mm-hmm. and allowed that sacrifice to stand, it would not have been a happy love story. That would have been I would've... a tragic love story because w- the rest of that film, you'd have to deal with uh, him being hurt and not being able to, yeah. to deal with it. And the fact that he realizes there is a way i can see her again Mm -hmm. yeah do do not get me wrong i understand i understand why the character did that i totally understand that it's just the his the the you just don't like that their happy ending resulted in a thousand if not hundreds of thousands of other unhappy endings yeah exactly for for what was so two people can be in love three years later after he gets out of probationary high school yeah pretty much while she's still in high school yeah I get it. Yeah. And admittedly, this was a thought that came to my mind. But at the same time, I'm sitting here going, okay, what other choices did they have? Yeah. Oh, I, I agree. Be granted, like, what? Granted, he, he, have him go and talk to her, have that last goodbye. Yeah. That could have been a beautiful scene also. And maybe yeah. he could have gotten much better closure for mm. essentially her death. Yeah. Um, uh, doing it that way where they fi- actually do get to say goodbye after she mm. sacrificed when he sees her in heaven and then maybe she sends him back yeah and she stays that would have been i think maybe that would have been the harder thing from a uh human point of view to do yeah agreed and it may have resulted in a better story where he had to 
to live with that loss. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I wouldn't have gotten one of my likes yeah. <laughs> of the film. Mm -hmm. But you're right. At the same time, their happy ending resulted in about 100,000 other people having very bad endings. Yeah. The entire city of Tokyo having a bad ending. In fact, it still looks like there's still going to be raining because it hasn't stopped. It wasn't no, stopped raining. No, it has that. not. And apparently maybe her prayers don't work anymore. Yeah. Because she's praying there at the end and the sun never comes out. Yeah. So she, by coming back, she, she lost her connection. Mm -hmm. And now there's nobody. And, and they try to hand wave this. Yeah, they do. But yeah, I get what you're saying. I get yeah. exactly what you're saying. Yeah. I just, I found it just be like, what was the, uh, the quote from Star Trek to the, the wrath of Khan. That is the, 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 what is that quote? I'm sorry. The needs of the many outweigh, outweigh the, the needs, needs of the few or the one. one. Yeah. However, Star Trek three, the search for Spock, mm -hmm. they turn that on their head when, uh, well, actually, they, the line comes in Star Trek Four, but it's what Star Trek Three is about. Yeah, when because uh, in Star Trek Four, Spock's going back through trying to relearn everything after yeah. being resurrected, mm -hmm. and he says he doesn't understand why they went to all this trouble just for him. Yeah, and uh, Spock's mother Amanda says because they believe that sometimes the needs of the one mm -hmm. outweigh the mm -hmm. needs of the many. Yeah, which he says that's completely illogical. Cool. Humans do illogical things, mm -hmm. and she says they do indeed. Eed. The entry. And that's what we've got here is an yeah, illogical exactly. thing mm -hmm. born purely out of passion mm -hmm. that admittedly he probably realizes especially when he gets back to tokyo three years later he realizes all of this is still it's, his is fault, fault. Mm -hmm. because he could not live without uh hina yeah yeah that's but the... all that goes away when he finally gets back to her so. mm-hmm and admittedly, that's the other thing. It's like, I, as much as I love the ending, they don't give enough to of the ending to really give closure. I agree with in that. In my opinion. Uh, the, to the movie. Yeah, there, there is that one scene where uh, Honoka is, he's talking with uh, like a person he knew, and it's like, oh yeah, you, had to, you were displaced from the, uh, when the, uh, the, the water rose. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh yeah, I had yeah, to move. Miss, that, uh, Miss Tachibana. Yeah, Miss Tachibana. Yeah. Ta Takis grandmother grandmother yeah <laughs> i'm like bring thanks. that back around yeah think that back it's around like, agree it's like well, I, weren't you living in a house well after the flood rotters rose i mean we had to move yeah it's like oh crap that was my that fault was my fault <laughs> yeah but she's like no it wasn't your fault and this whole area used to be underwater Water. not 200 years ago and i'm going was it only 200 years ago <laughs> Admittedly, I don't know. I I know Ed. I know when that area was so called Edo mm -hmm. before they moved the capital there. Yeah, I know it was mostly swampland, but mm -hmm. was it underwater? I, I don't know. I don't know. I would think it would be sinking then, but what yeah. do I know? So yeah, that's my first dislike. What's your second? I got tired <laughs> of all of the inner monologues that oh that hodaka had oh my gosh because a lot of them or it's like you don't i get that this is what you're thinking mm -hmm. but this is unnecessary information it's like hang on is this the time first time i've been to a girl's house you should know are you just now realizing this wait is this the first time someone's confessed their love to me, me? Like, well lucky you <laughs> That doesn't come to everybody. Why are you acting like this is a rite of passage? Hit a personal nerve, didn't it? Just a touch. Just a touch. Uh, but no, I mean, every time that happened, it confused me for a second because in almost every instance, he does that inner monologue while he's not on screen. So it just sounds like him talking. It's like, wait a minute. It's like, you're telling her to wait a minute? Is this the, it's like, oh, you're talking to your, you're talking in your head again. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> Confuse the crud out of me. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> uh, so my second dislike would be, now granted, this story is very well done, but it kind of, story-wise, kind of recycles a little bit from the director's previous film, which was Your Name. So there's a little bit of theming that has been 
leftovers or recycled story kind of little story beats here and there and uh i know some critics have gone out and said be like oh it's just a rehash it's not a rehash no it's it's using certain certain beats from your name into weather room with you be like yeah it's a it's a it's a tight in universe but I just, the one thing I did notice was the there are certain little beats here, little story beats here and there that are very much just pulled from your name. But there again, great film. I just noticed that. What is your third dislike? The fact that it does mirror the beats of your name. Okay. Too much. <laughs> okay. I say a little too much. I mean, you, they kind of do hit like it's a different story it's not the same yeah. story by any stretch of the imagination right. but there are parts that seem like yeah in the last movie uh they met back up but they had to keep separated because they're still split in time in this movie they met back up and they're together yeah it's like well they they were separated or, by a restraining order or yeah, something separated by a restraining order but then or, they did get back together by the end of the film yeah and they get back together on a hill, uh, uh, on on inclines, and immediately this time they they don't have them mm-hmm. trying to run to catch up to each other. Yeah. And once they realize they actually know each other, mm-hmm. even though they don't remember each other like you have in your name. Right. And this one, you have them uh, happening upon each other and then mm-hmm. running towards each other and hugging. At least we get that kind of mm-hmm. an embrace. Yeah. And it's like, and it's and it ends similarly. It has a bunch of plot points that fit. Mm-hmm. around the same time they do but they're played differently and in some ways i like that and in other yeah. ways i don't mm-hmm. it feels like we had a script we had an outline and we reused the outline but changed some stuff to make it less obvious mm-hmm. except that weathering with you is in my opinion the better film in yeah. my opinion yeah i know other people say your name is the better film bear in mind i am talking about like microscopic degrees of difference here yeah agreed so i mean yeah this is a great film and it just has a couple things it, and all my three are nitpicks yeah of course being honest of course it's because i'm having to look for something it's like yeah this could you could have been done slightly better here could have been slightly done better there of course for the most part i don't care when i'm watching the movie mm. it's just because i guarantee you i did not notice this in the first viewing mm was more blown away by look at all the skyscrapers there's 3d and a 2d anime it's so it's mitsuha <laughs> it's so pretty yes <laughs> to quote francisco back when he was doing his uh greek streams on uh saturday Cade adventures on saturday mornings it's so pretty <laughs> I think I explained more than I actually quoted, but why don't whatever? <laughs> yeah, that's my third dislike. All right, so my third dislike is Honoka. I'm saying that right, Honoka. Yeah, Honoka. Yeah, Honoka. You got off easy, buddy. Oh yes, <laughs> he got off so easy. So let's 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 name the list of stuff he did. All let's right, get the movie. big one first. He fired a firearm in Tokyo. It doesn't matter who it's at. That's super illegal in Japan. Yeah. You're not twice. Even, <laughs> twice. You're not even supposed to have a gun. Yeah. Period exactly. in yeah. Japan. You should have thrown that thing away the minute you saw it and walked away. But it was but it was no, lucky. Yeah. It was lucky. Oh, yeah. It was it my was, lucky charm. It was his lucky charm. He thought it was a toy. <laughs> you didn't admittedly if you've not been around guns, you may not know to do this. But you didn't check to see if the gun was loaded with real bullets. Yeah. Made of steel, be like it's got well, a firing I mean, chamber in the whole of it. I mean, they do make air guns of that quality. I agree. I agree. But I've you, seen some of that. But there are some uh, obvious telltale signs yeah. that that's what that is. None of which was on that gun that mm-hmm. I could see. Yeah. And that he should have been able to know, at least, admittedly, I'm yeah. in Texas. We are taught to use guns from an early age. age. We know what to look <laughs> for because it's we grew up with it. Yeah. Admittedly, in Japan, most people go there have gone their entire lives having never seen a gun, yeah, except on television. Mm. So maybe they don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So we have Honoka with a gun, which he's not supposed to have, yeah. because it's very clear to be like if you have a gun, if you know where a gun is and you don't tell us, be like you get in trouble. Let's see. He fires the gun twice. Yeah. He 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 runs. He's 
He runs from the law. He multiple times, multiple times. He assaults a police officer. He points a gun at a police officer. Mm -hmm. He runs from the law. He has multiple accomplishments. Co accomplishments? Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Accomplices. 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 Thank you. He has multiple accomplices that are helping him through this entire thing. And so he finally gets down and he only gets three years probation. Well, he is a minor. I, I, that's what I but thought. That's, that's what I thought. Here's the other problem. Yeah. Do you realize that in Japan, it, the, the life of a school kid is pretty much run by that school? Yeah. So that if you get something, like if you get a, a police record, mm -hmm. it doesn't, it's not just on you. It reflects against the, the school. school. Mm -hmm. So it is, I don't know how common this is, mm -hmm. but I do know of at least a video game. I know that's another thing, but where the kid got expelled because he had a police record, even though it was, uh, it was trumped up charges. Mm hmm. It didn't matter. He had a police record. He got expelled. Yeah. And he had to transfer to another school, ironically, in Tokyo. Uh, <laughs> that would take him. Yeah, but he wasn't even going to school at the time. And he ran well, away yeah. from home. Yes, but he still was a student of that school, even though he had run away from home. Yeah. Maybe his school was a bit more lenient. Maybe. Very possible. But uh, then the example I quoted, but... I mean, it's that could have destroyed his future. Of course, running away from home could have destroyed his future yeah. too. That because that's also illegal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is true. But according to not, I think it was, it's not in canon film. But according to, I think it was like the director or someone who said this. It was the in, not it was the uh, novelization of the movie over yeah, in Japan. Right. In that he was running, what he ran away from was actually like a. A, he was assaulted by his father or something yeah like he was that. being abused by his father abused by his father yeah yeah that's what he was running away from because no one would listen to him mm -hmm. but then he had to go back to that situation yeah that's what i'm thinking it's like what the fudge i i'm curious how the book handled that yeah i wonder i wonder he, too was he in prison at that time his father maybe who knows I don't know. but it was just more that hinaka Hina, hinaka hinaka well, I don't know. We've mispronounced. We, we, you've asked me the, that's a the, Hodaka. The, Hodaka. Yeah. Hodaka. 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 Yeah. Hodaka got off. So be like, if you were to talk to something like an American perspective, be like one, you, 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 you assaulted a police officer. You aimed a gun at a police officer. You fired a gun in a police officer's presence. And by the grace of God, they didn't kill you. <laughs> I think that not doesn't just get you juvie. That gets you tried as an adult. adult. Which yeah. means you go to adult prison. Yeah, here in the States. Yeah. So uh, it's just like From this. What I understand. This young man got off so easy. Uh, granted, he's 16. I get it. But listen, like, for, all, for all the stuff he did, he got off so easy. And granted, for the story, he needed to be where he could go find Hina after mm -hmm. three years. Yeah, exactly. So that they could then have spend the rest of their life together, I assume. Pl plot convenience. <laughs> but yeah. It's called Let the Movie Have Its Happy Ending. It doesn't hurt nothing. That is true. But he got off so easy. Yeah. Just saying. That's my third dislike. Anyway, that brings us to the end yeah. of this review. So we need to rate this thing. Yeah. I'm rating it a 10. You're rating it a 10? Yes. Wow. I I've only done that, I think, one other time, which yeah. was for Totoro. Mm -hmm. It's a nearly a perfect movie. Yeah. Oh, I agree. I say nearly. It's close enough that I don't care that any of the nitpicks I came up with. Yeah. I came up with those because we have to do a podcast. Yeah. I was looking for stuff. <laughs> I, I have to look for something that's like, this could have been better. But the fact of the matter is, in the moment, I didn't care. Yeah. I was like, so pretty. Oh, <laughs> it's Mitsuha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, 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 I hope they can get stuff like you've seen this movie a hundred, th uh, two or three times. I don't care. I want to. I really hope they make it out of this alive. <laughs> I'm sit I'm just right there on the back of the bike with the, uh, with, with the the niece whose name I can't remember right now, and she's like, I'm gonna be a cop and catch all the speeders. <laughs> and, she, and and you're going, they'll never hire you after, after this. this. <laughs> That's one of the best slides in the oh, movie. I, oh, I agree. Completely agree. 
Uh, oh, but yeah, my gosh. Uh, it's a nearly perfect movie. Near enough, I give it a perfect score. Ten oh, out my of gosh. Ten. Uh, I'll get, I'm, I'm definitely. If I could rate it higher, I would. <laughs> yeah, he probably would. Uh, so I'm going to give it an, a. Um, oh, my gosh. Like, at, at one point when I was doing my notes, I gave it a certain uh certain low a certain um uh, certain score that was much lower than Drew's is but I'm gonna give it a oh well, let's just give it a nine point five. Like this is a it is a great film. It's cinematic gold who's be like to who has ever be like loves movies, watch this movie, go watch your name, go watch this movie. It's great. I don't care if you're an anime fan or taku average movie fan or just the movie buff go watch it it's worth watching so yes 9.5 it is spectacular be like i think i've only given one movie a 10 i think i have to go back and look at it but that was just me geeking out because it's one of my favorite disney films of all time but either or um so yeah that is my score i give it a a 9.9.5 and drew gives it a 10 Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm looking for trivia for next week. Oh, okay. Uh yeah, what movie are we next reviewing? Next week we're reviewing Batman and Mr. Freeze yeah. Sub Zero. Yeah. This is actually going to be our tie-in movie with uh, the rest of the Culture Box Media Network. As we this quarter we are focusing on Batman stuff. We were on their uh Batman 66 Retro Rewinds Batman 66 mm-hmm. review recently. I know Geek Devotions has done some stuff centered around the movie The Batman that just came out recently. I mm-hmm. uh, don't know what anyone else is doing. Mm. I haven't heard, but that's some stuff I know is coming. Yeah, because we've already reviewed Batman Mask of the Phantasm oh, yes. and Batman Return of the Joker. So Batman and Beyond p- Return of the Joker. I literally picked the next movie. I literally brought up a list of Batman movies, and I picked one we hadn't done, which was Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero. Mm-hmm. Which is a good film. I haven't seen it, but I'm looking forward. Oh, it's good. Uh, I'm still looking for good trivia. Yeah, it's trivia question. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so here's here's an idea. You don't have to use this one as a trivia. Okay. Uh, so this movie was supposed to come out a year prior to its release, but it got delayed because of a certain um uh, full length movie that Warner Brothers had released a year prior and it caused Warner Brothers not to release this one because it would have a connection with this bigger Batman film that came out a year prior so you're asking what Batman film came out close to the, what other Batman film came yeah, out what, close what, to this yeah what caused this movie to be delayed by a year a year release curious no i don't want stupid thing batman and film that's what i want to see Mm -hmm. and of course it doesn't list the anim but it does list master of the phantasm when was this movie released but it doesn't list this movie Ah. it goes Mask of the Phantasm, the Lego Batman movie are the only two animated films that lists because I think this is theatrically released films. Yeah, I think you were just on it. Uh, can't be up, up, that, up, but up, it's got to be. It has to be that. Yeah, it's that. Because this movie came out in 1998. That makes sense. Okay, yeah. So yeah, which the the trivia question then is going to be, what Batman movie came out that caused this movie to be delayed a year? That's the question. We I know it. He knows it. Yes. Do you know it? Ironically, it has connections. It does. But we will talk about that next week when mm-hmm. we review Batman, Sub, uh, Mr. Free Sub-Zero. Zero. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, this has been Drew. This is Jacob. And we will catch you in the next frame. You can follow Jacob on his Facebook at Jacob B. Heron. His Facebook page, Jacob's Daily Art Corner, where he tries to draw each and every day. His Instagram at Jacob B. Heron. His Twitter at Jacob Heron. And his letterbox to Jacob Heron. You can find Drew on Facebook at Drew Dodgen. His Facebook page Drew's photo bin to see his photography. 
his letterboxed page at ggeorge759, his Twitter at ggeorge759, and Instagram at Drew Dodgen. You can like us on Facebook at The Cellcast Podcast, on Twitch at The Cellcast Gaming, on YouTube at Cellcast, on Twitter at cast underscore cell. The Cellcast can be found at Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or anywhere else fine podcasts are downloaded from. Please rate and review us where you found us, and also on Podchaser. Email us at thecellcastpodcast at gmail.com. The Cellcast is a proud member of both the Pop Americana and Culture Box Media Networks. For more information, please see the link in the description. Our theme song is Drop and Roll by Silent Partner. And remember, that's Cell, with a single L.